Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review the indie horror film Chainsaw Cheerleaders, where they trade in their pom-poms for power tools. Written and directed by Don Farmer, starring Tiffany Shepis, Debbie Rashawn, and Michelle Gray. Chainsaw Cheerleaders is about a rebellious girl who gets kicked out of her house and is forced to join a cheerleading squad. Little does she know that some shit has happened and there's fucking witches around and now they have to fight evil spirits and witches and deal with death a lot and then eventually find a chainsaw at the end. <laughs> so what did we like about this movie? So I'm gonna kick it off with the very nice looking cheerleaders, especially Jackie Hall, who played Chassie. She was the cutest, in my opinion. Sassy Chassie, as I was thinking. <laughs> she was just very chipper, but then she dropped the F word a few times. <laughs> Caught me off guard. Going along with like the, the hot chicks of this movie, it was nice to see Tiffany Shepis, because I love her. Her eyes just kill me. Literally. Even though <laughs> when they turn red and actually do kill you, in, so to speak, I thought she was uh, equally as sexy in this movie as she is in all movies. And going off of that, Debbie Rashawn also nailed it in this one. You pop them things out, which is nice. You get to see those things. It was cool because you got to see she had nippons at first. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's never heard the word nippon, so we taught him that while we were watching the movie. Immediately, they rip mm -hmm. off the nighty. This is a very small budget movie. The acting was actually reasonable. Dawn, played by Michelle Gray, did a great job, especially when she's arguing with her parents. That was the most most realistic scene in the whole film. He did a great job. Also, the mom did. I thought it was really funny with the dad, though. And then, like, defocus in the background, just like, shucks. Oh, my daughter's sleeping around. I think my favorite actor is one of the, like, witch hunters. That the witch must burn for her blasphemy. It is the will of Almighty God. I really enjoyed the practical effects in this film. Although a lot of the kills were off screen, I love that they used different camera angles and different camera effects to like include a little bit of each kill that was actually legit on camera. And they were just done so well, I really enjoyed it in this film. In general, for a micro budget film, I mean, the sound was reasonable. There were a couple clipping issues, but it was okay. The camera work was all right, aside from some of like the softness due to like the shoddy camera they were using. So this was filmed in 2008, so that's understandable. So what were our favorite kills? My favorite kill was Debbie Rashawn, sadly. She was actually banging herself with a vibrator and a weird slithery thing that looked like it was from Slither <laughs> rolled up in that puss. It kind of like crawled through her chest and burst out her neck. Looked cool, thought it was dope, sorry. Sorry, Debbie. My favorite kill goes to Dawn. She has her chainsaw, and she's come up against this, like, drooling slave guy of the main demon. She just grabs her chainsaw and just, like, slices him in half, and I love that kill. My favorite kill is the detective. Bambi shows up. You know what? I think this detective's just gonna shoot himself in the head. He just turns the gun around, and it's an on-screen kill, and we see full splat on the wall, and him just go down out of frame. What did we like about this film? Everything kind of seemed like Young and the Restless or something because it had like this slight blur to it and I know that's because of like the low budget camera they used but it's just something that set us off a bit. I felt that the story fell flat. It was kind of boring at a lot of points and all over the place especially with the witch. Don, I got you. I'm going to kill you in a minute because I'm going to go leave for no apparent reason. How'd it go Donnie? We'll pick this up a little later. Yeah, the last like 20 minutes of this film was very convoluted and just like a big chase scene it led to a, a few different location shots and maybe that's why because they wanted to change up the movie a bit like in the first like 20 minutes of the movie the whole area is just an open like park park as don's walking to wherever it's clearly a like bike path 10 minutes later the cheerleaders are practicing and you see that same bike path right there and this can easily be solved by not pretending you're in a different location. I didn't think that for something branded as chainsaw cheerleaders, we saw enough chainsaws. We did see a lot of cheerleaders, but we didn't see them together a lot. We saw them closer to the end of the movie, but they really didn't do anything other than attack some chairs. Some of the effects after people had died that were on the ground were reasonable, but I would have liked to see like tons more blood. So there were a lot of things that they could have done very cheaply. You could do this on a budget and they just didn't. And I think they could have. I would have loved a scene where they actually started the chainsaw and had it running. This movie's called Chainsaw Cheerleaders. And half the scenes are a chainsaw that it isn't even on. I feel like you can obviously turn this chainsaw on and make it look way more intimidating to the audience. <laughs> if we're gonna make chainsaw part of the title, 
I want like blood. Like blood is super cheap. Throw some corn syrup down, throw some food coloring down. We got some blood. Put it in some friggin' grinder that flows in the air, and we get some great practical effects. This thing had lots of chainsaws, and not a lot of blood. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. This movie was actually pretty cool for what a micro budget it was. Surprisingly, really cool practical effects for the ones that there were, but a lot of plot holes. Because it seemed like a lot of the deaths or a lot of the really cool scenes were openings to pornos. You get the cool music going on, like that. With that said, I'm gonna give this two and a half Bambi decapitations out of five. Chainsaw Cheerleaders wasn't that bad. Being a super B-rated film, you have to have the kills or you have to have more nudity. I'm fine with either or. It didn't satisfy me as enough to give this a higher rating. The acting was pretty decent, but the story was very dry. Uh, so I'm gonna give this one and a half Tiffany Shepis's Eating a heart very sexually out of five. This film wasn't that bad, but it definitely wasn't that good. There was way too many plot holes. We had pointless chase scenes, but we had really good looking actresses. We saw some nudity and what practical effects we saw were really good. So that being said, I'm going to give this film one and a half removing lungs the hard way out of five. As always, thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked our review and comment below with your thoughts on the film. What were your thoughts? I honestly want to know. If you have anything similar or something with more blood and more chainsaws, let us know in the comments below. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated with everything we're doing here at Bloodbath and Beyond. Peace out, bros. I need to be Swedish. Peace out, bros. Pizza, 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 pizza.